Uh, I recently, I've gotten into quotes, and so the quote, if I had to go give myself one, right, is that everything will work out in the end, and if it hasn't worked out, it's not the end. Oh, I actually, I take that a lot. Hi, I'm Chris Kiernan, and I'm on Shop Talk with B Diamond Leather. This is my first hot rod I ever had. This is a 1929 Ford Model A, uh, referred to as a tub now, but it started life as a four-door sedan. It was actually my grandpa's car. Oh, that's cool. Uh, he had got it, uh, I have no idea when, but I have a photo of my dad as a little boy when this car was together in stock. Really? Yeah, so this, this car, it was a four-door sedan, my uh, my whole life, it had been on my grandma's back patio in a bunch of pieces. It was completely disassembled. At some point, my grandpa was going to tore it apart to restore it, as okay. so many people do. He passed away when I was a little kid. So one day, I asked my grandma, I said, hey, what's going to happen with the old Model A? And she said, oh, uh, are you interested in it? And I said, yeah, but I'm going to chop it up and make a hot rod. And she said, I just want my patio back. <laughs> That's all she cared That's about. That's all she cared about. Yeah. She had never used her patio in years. And so I had no idea uh, what I wanted for a hot rod, okay. but I knew you could build a hot rod out of a Model A. Oh yeah, without a doubt. And so I got the car and then I stumbled upon the hokey ass message board mm -hmm. and I learned about traditional hot rods. I had no idea, but I went into the thing thinking, I'd like to have a hot rod my grandpa could have had when he was a young man. I dig it and all the right things came together uh, for this to be a pretty traditional hot rod. Yeah. Uh, 1950 Cadillac engine that's still running the Hydromatic. Um, the dash is also came out of the same Cadillac that the motor and trans came out of. Oh, that's really cool. Um, and initially, right again, this was my first hot rod, so I thought if I keep the gauges, I don't need to learn. I don't need to figure all this stuff out. Those worked with the same engine yeah. that's now going to power yeah. my hot rod. Yep. So yeah, that's, that's part of it. it and it and it looks good. So, uh, but that motor actually uh, came from Jim, who originally built this car. Okay. And Jim told me I was building this car at Jim's shop. He had uh, A and J Auto Body, mm -hmm. and he was teaching me and helping me build this car. And uh, he said, you know, this car needs a Cadillac engine. And I thought, well, that'd be neat if I was rich, yeah, right? Because exactly. what's one of these costs to buy one and then to have it rebuilt and to do all those things? And I said, well, that'd be neat. And he said, well, uh, I actually have one in the 50 sedan that's out back. If you can get it to run, it's yours. Oh, heck yeah. So uh, we got it to run. Yeah. And initially, I put it in this car just straight out of there. I cleaned it up and I painted it. Uh, since then, it's gotten rings and valve guides okay. uh, and, and kind of gone through, but it's never fully been rebuilt um but yeah this so this motor was from jim well i'm noticing that uh it's a rad car but it's missing something that you do uh pinstriping there's no pinstriping there's no, pinstriping. no <laughs> none on it. there uh so that was the old grill shell okay and it has pinstriping on it yeah and there used to be a little pinstriping on the headlights and on the oil filter, but when I put this 32 grill shell on it, uh, I just wanted it to be black again. Okay. So, I think it though. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I've not figured out the exact type of pinstriping for the style of this car. Like a lot of people would say, oh, it's got this great canvas on the back. You should have this huge thing. But to me, it just doesn't fit. It just, right. When I go pinstripe something, it speaks to me. This car has never spoken to me yeah. and said, this is what I need. Uh, so this is, as I said, this was Jim's car. Okay. This is a 36 Ford four-door sedan. Uh, it was originally built in the mid nineties. I'm not sure how long Jim worked on it. Uh, when he first debuted it, it, uh, it won best of show at the gambler's run 
in uh, Elko, Nevada. Oh, so that's right. featured on the T-shirt, um, first place here. And then this was the old car show plaque that he used to use to show uh, with the car. Yeah, that's pretty rad that you have those. Uh, he passed away, and uh, and I got to be the the caretaker of his car. That's and awesome. And it's. Uh, if you've never had somebody else's car, sometimes it's a lot to live up to. It you is. always, uh, yeah. you know, he, he, w I knew, we knew I was going to get this car. And so we talked a lot about me getting this car. And, <laughs> Which would you, be an odd conversation uh, in, in general. Yeah. And, and then, right, there's some expectations <laughs> about <laughs> what you do and yeah. don't do. And uh, you try to honor all those things. So um, let's, let's just see what he actually said because. I guarantee he probably said, don't turn it into a effing blank. <laughs> what, what well, blank? <laughs> so the couple of things, he, he did say, so, I, so I've changed, and normally it runs those hubcaps, okay. uh, but it's up on stands. I'm working on it. But uh, we did talk about changing wheels and tires, and we talked about them being bigger. And I think that at the time we were talking about it, you know, billet wheels were big. I think that's kind of what he had envisioned. Okay. 16 inch steelies are still bigger. Yeah, so I bigger. like to leverage that <laughs> I, I honored that conversation, okay. but it fits the style. So 16 inch black Ford wheels, the same on both cars. Yep. Uh, the one thing that he did say that I haven't changed yet uh, is to not change the interior. Uh, Jim was a, a body man and a painter by profession. He okay. owned a body shop and so he did all the paint work, but the one thing that he, and he did all the, the chassis work and everything, the one thing he paid somebody to do is the interior. And in the 90s when he had that interior done, yep. uh, and there's a bunch of stuff piled in here because <laughs> I'm working on it, but he said, I paid $8,000 for that fucking interior. <laughs> Don't change it. Don't you mentioned pinstriping, so I, I think it's worth showing a couple of things. I think um, so too. For anybody that's aspiring to pinstripe, this is one of the first things I ever pinstriped. Okay. Uh, I actually still have the very first thing I ever leather tool too. Nice. Yeah. Um, here's a little better pinstriping, a little tiki deal. Um, that's, uh, oh, I have a date on it, 04. 04. So that's 20, yeah, years, 20 old. years old. That's a long time. I had a, a small, skateboard company called more skateboards oh that's pretty rad and uh more stands for my other ride <laughs> so uh it started with right people had a, a sticker on the back of their car that was like my other ride is a porsche and they're driving a minivan yeah and so uh kind of the premise behind this was that my other ride is a skateboard um, that. so these are all uh most of this wall are graphics that we did um and released locally here with my little homegrown skateboard company up through the uh this this card is the last one. Oh, that's right why did you guys stop the company uh it just right you get in and out of things and it was time to do more hot rodding tell me what got you into cars oh wow so my family kind of always had cars, okay. but not customized cars. Uh, my first, my first like introduction to things that were customized was lowrider bikes. Oh, heck yeah. So uh, low riding was really the first stuff, but lowrider bikes, and that got me interested in paint. Um, my first car was a lowrider. My first car was an 85 Buick Regal. Oh, nice. That uh, had hydraulics. We uh, had fully reinforced the frame, you know, could do all the stuff. Yeah. Could actually bunny hop. I wish I had video of that kind of stuff. We didn't have video of anything back then. Yeah, no. But yeah, I could park in three wheel. It was pretty, pretty good car. And uh, yeah, so I always like low riders and uh, you know, the crazy paint. That's kind of what got me into pinstriping. Really? Was the paint and yeah. wanting to do custom paint. It's, it's interesting, for a long time I didn't really pinstripe a lot of lowriders. Okay. I did much more like hot rod style pinstriping. Yep. And so it was only a handful of years ago that I really like, I thought, you know, I should learn the scrolls uh, that a lot of the lowrider guys are interested in. Yep. And so, so I did. And uh, yeah, I've enjoyed 
doing some of that. Well, what actually, I mean, that actually leads me into my next question is what got you into pinstriping then? Ah, so my same friend Jim, he, uh, we loud for a second. So my friend Jim that had the body shop teaching me all kinds of things. Yeah. His daughter was racing junior dragsters. Okay. And so we were custom painting all those junior dragsters. Yeah. And then they'd get done and he'd send them to Bruno yeah. to get lettering yeah. and to get all the graphics outlined. Yeah. And I thought, well, I want to be able to do like the whole custom thing myself. And so some of it was watching Bruno lettering those junior dragsters. It was like magic to seeing that happen. And then part of it was being able to finish, you know, my own paint jobs. Yeah. The funny thing is I've pinstriped way more stuff and outlined way more other people's graphics than I've had the chance to do my own. I've done my own whole custom paint jobs for people, okay. but I've pinstriped far more stuff. And you've been doing pinstriping for how long now? I, about 25 years. That's a long time. Yeah. When I started to build this car, I was probably 20, I don't know, 26, 27 years old. Okay. And I I got the car, I went home and I told my wife, hey, I want to build this hot rod. She was like, well, that's great, but like, we're not rich. <laughs> and so like fundamentally, I paid to build this car out of the tip of my pinstriping paintbrush. Like I would go pinstripe a, a car or a motorcycle or whatever. Yeah. And then I'd take that couple hundred bucks from that job buy a hot rod part, do whatever work I could do till I got my next pinstriping job. That's rad, actually. And uh, so that's really how I paid to initially build this car. Yeah. I, uh, at the time, there was a, a guy, Dan Udy, uh, badass choppers, and the chopper thing was huge. Yeah. And he was doing these killer flamed paint jobs, and every one of them needed to be outlined. And so uh, outlining those flames probably more than anything paid for this car. <laughs> So then, you started out with low riders. What got you into hot rods besides this being your grandpa's old car? I, I, I'm not honestly sure because I would, you know, as a young adult, I would read Street Rider magazine, okay. and I thought like, there's no way I'm ever gonna have those kind of cars. Yeah. I think when I found like traditional hot rodding, uh, there's kind of the punk rock skateboarder. Thing that goes along with that. 100%, that choppers. So uh, I think that that, in some ways, now it's kind of connected all that. Um, and maybe that's part of what it was initially. But it's just like in skateboarding, in hot rodding, like everything needs a name. Yep. Uh, I was telling you, a couple of my friends have tubs. We call ourselves the Zion Tub Club. <laughs> now, how old are you now? 47. 47? Okay, so you're just right behind me. Yeah. I turned 50 in September. Nice. Now, in your 47 years of experience on this earth, we've all been through different things in life. What would you go back and tell your nine-year-old self? Uh, I'd tell myself that it's gonna be okay. Uh, I recently, I've gotten into quotes. And so the quote, if I had to go give myself one, right, is that everything will work out in the end. And if it hasn't worked out, it's not the end. I take that a lot. And I don't know who says that because I, I don't care about who said it as much as what it means to me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we all have challenges in life, but if, if I was nine and I knew that everything would be okay, I'd have probably gone for some more things that I didn't go for. And it has been okay so far, yeah. but now, you don't always is, know that. Is there any specific reason why that's what you would tell yourself? I, I think because... The other thing that I've learned is that nobody really knows what they're doing unless <laughs> unless it's in one particular craft. But in general, in life, people are winging it. Yes, they are. And so if you could understand that it's going to be okay, you'd be more apt to just wing it and go figure it out as it goes. Yeah. You know, I, I find that to be super true even more so with parenting. Oh, yeah. You know, like when I'm growing up, I thought my mom and dad had, had it together. I thought they knew everything. I thought that, you know, they obviously knew how to be parents. But when you become a parent, you realize that you don't know anything. <laughs> that you really are just doing your best and trying to be the best parent you could be, you know? Oh, yeah. No, I think that's rad. So what things in life make you happy? But I'm going to take out a couple 
find success. Uh, if I can help that in some way, that's even better. But honestly, to be able to see people learn new things or to figure things out or whatever it is that helps them find success, yeah. then I, there's nothing better than seeing somebody else succeed. And because they're succeeding doesn't mean I, I don't get to succeed too. That is true. Now, do you ever watch those YouTube videos of people sing like, it's like their moment and that moment is actually captured? Yeah, it's do amazing. Did you, you ever cry? Sometimes. I do too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not alone. <laughs> I found out about traditional hot rodding, right? I just wanted something simple. Yeah. Uh, something I've really tried to incorporate into everything I do anymore is for things to be timeless. Right? One of the, this car could have existed in 1955, 100%. could exist today in 2024. Yeah. And I hope that when I'm 70, I'm taking a drive in this car still, and it basically still looks the same. Yeah. You know, and that, that is true. There's very genres of car stuff that are timeless. And I think you're right, traditional hot rods are one of those timeless ones. You know, some things stand the test of time. Dickies pants. Like, I wore the same Dickies pants as a skateboarding graffiti writing yeah. kid. I would say that they're timeless. I'll probably wear them when I'm 70 driving this car still. <laughs> like, See, I hope by then I'm in the one-piece jumper zip with <laughs> That's like my goal in life, is to get to the age where I feel comfortable wearing the one piece. I have a few of those, and I can't say I feel comfortable <laughs> wearing them yet. Now, with that, one of the things that I'd like to ask is, I don't care if you own your own business, you work for somebody else, there's still keys to success. What would you say the key to your success is with what you do? Uh, I think determination to figure things out. Uh, like I said before, I think that most people are winging it, and one of the big differences is, right, the, the people that recognize that or are willing to just take on something that they've never done uh, is a different level of determination. And so, you know, there's been a lot of things. I, I like to say there was a day none of us could tie our own shoes, uh, and now look at us. But I've always worn slip-on bands. <laughs> Your shoes today, <laughs> while they might slip on, have laces. Uh, but like the determination to just figure it out. Yeah. Like it's easy to go, I don't know, or that's not my job. Yeah. But the difference to me is just saying, I don't. Maybe I don't know, but that doesn't mean I can't figure it out. So, how long have you been married? Well, Twenty-four years. Twenty-four years. Yeah, we got married in two thousand. So, what do you think the key to being married for that long? Is? Um, I think the same thing. We don't know it all. So you got to be willing to admit that you don't know it all yep. a lot of times. Um, I also think there's a lot of compromise that goes into successful marriage. I, I don't get to play hot rods every day. Yep. Uh, and I also don't do everything that, you know, my wife asks every day. So there's there's a balance in all that. But if I just said, I'm always gonna do this, then that wouldn't lead to a successful marriage. That is so Have you ever owned a hardtail chopper before? I've actually never owned a motorcycle. Because you do the chopper hop. Yeah. You know what the chopper hop is? No. It's when you know a bug's coming up <laughs> and you hop a little bit to help the vehicle over it. <laughs> uh. That's nice. No, but I know I have very little rear suspension. <laughs> this might as well be a hardtail. Yep. So in your 47 years of being on this planet, what's some advice, any type of advice you might have that you'd want to pass on to someone watching? Oh, man. Um, many people that know me will say this is my saying but uh, how you do anything is how you do everything. And to me, what that means is, right, to give whatever it is that you're giving your attention to, yep. to give it all your attention. Yep. If you're building a car, right, give it the best fit and finish and all that stuff that you can. If you're, you know, in a relationship, give that 
all the attention that you can. Yeah. And, you know, how you do the little things ends up being how the big things happen. So, you don't get to 24 years of marriage through one day. You get through, you know, that doesn't happen all at once. It happens every day in little teeny pieces. Yeah. Uh, and that's how everything happens. I thought, why don't I do that with my friends? We'll drive our hot rods and we'll go get a hamburger. So, like everything needs a name. Yep, it does. So we came up with, uh, and I needed to rip off Jerry. So we came up with this uh, hooligans and hot rods getting hamburgers, <laughs> which simply started with once a month we'll go get a hamburger somewhere. Yeah. We'll drive our hot rods. It is what it is. It's, you know, hooligans and hot rods getting hamburgers, and we go get lunch, usually at a small hamburger joint, try oh, to be cool. like a mom and pop place. Yeah. Um, We've been places from Provo to up to Bear Lake to... Now, how do people find out about that if they do have a traditional hot rod or a hot rod? They uh, follow hooligans and hot rods on Instagram. Okay. That's really where I post all the stuff for that. Okay. Uh, four years ago, we did the first hooligans and hot rods on the highways, where we... Uh, what started as a three-day road trip, uh, we've typically hit a couple of national parks seen some of the scenic things that there are to see in Utah. Yeah. Um, and so we do that once a year. That's rad. I call it rolling out the red carpet for you. It's where you can talk about anything you want to talk about, whether it's something you're doing in your life, a project you have going on, whatever it is, the red carpet's down for you, my friend. <laughs> no. Well, I think we should roll it back like five minutes because really it's the hooligans thing. Yep. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it's kind of interesting. We just at the end of May, beginning of June, took this year's trip, which was to Yellowstone and to Grand Teton. Uh, this year, we expanded it to be in four days instead of three. Um, how many guys did you have? Or how many cars? Twenty. Twenty four. Uh, I think it was nineteen cars. Yeah, it was nineteen cars. Uh, I don't know how many people, but people from Nevada, California, Colorado. Uh, it's pretty amazing to me, right? Just, I mean, it started with, I wanted to go for a drive. <laughs> and now there's like this pretty amazing community of people yep. that, you know, people built things uh, to give out. So one of my friends that's a machinist uh, made like challenge coins. Yeah. So he gave everybody a coin. Um, somebody made a license plate topper. Um, my friend BJ Burkdahl, in collaboration with Brett, that are, uh, they made plaques. So hooligans and hot rods, uh, I will continue to say is not a car club, <laughs> but uh, they made a, a little and a square plaque, so kind of in homage to the square stickers. Yeah. Uh, a square plaque. It's actually got me driving the tub <laughs> That's right. on it. And rather than being cast, initially they tried to cast them, okay. and they couldn't get the detail they wanted. I'll show it to you when we get back to my house. Okay. But the uh, the amount of detail and the dimension, it's like 3D. Oh, that's rad. Uh, me and the tub on it, and so they made these hooligans and hot rods plaques yeah. and just everybody has contributed to uh to help and make that what it is you know i want to say thank you to you for coming out and yeah. going for a drive and looking at my junk and it was my pleasure and it was super rad getting to uh i you know thanks for doing this thing the the episodes i've watched of people that i know in the community and people that I don't know in the community, it's kind of a chance to get to know them. So, well, uh, thank you. I appreciate the support and you watching them and for you being on. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, well, with that being said, everybody, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you are watching the videos and uh, go over and, and give Chris a follow. And with that being said, I'm Byron. This is my man, Chris. This is Shop Talk with me, Diamond Leather. Have a rad week, everybody. Everything that happens is motivation. One time.
time coming home from the Salt Flats, some lady in a Volkswagen was behind me for a long time on the freeway and I stopped in Dell to buy gas. And she was like, you always drive that car like that? And I go, well, what do you mean like that? And she's like, you're doing 90 on the freeway. <laughs> I, maybe I do. <laughs> so this is the uh, Hooligans and Hot Rods plaque. 